Hey, it's Ranger Russ coming you, to you from Devil's Hop Yard State Park. Beautiful place. I'm on the Orange Trail right now. I'm going to flip the camera around right away to show you uh, where I am because it's a beautiful little place right here. So let's flip the camera around. And you can see down there is Eight Mile River. Runs right through Devil's Hop Yard. Let's talk a little bit. There's a bit of foam built up behind a log down there. That is not necessarily pollution. Foam can build up when the water is agitated. If it contains proteins, the proteins will foam up and, and cause that. So people might think it's some sort of pollution. Not necessarily. Okay. Let's take a look here. This isn't even the scenic overlook. There is a scenic overlook if you continue all the way up the orange trail, there's a beautiful scenic overlook. But I wanted to show you some other things so I couldn't go all the way there because I wouldn't be able to show you what I want to show you down below here. Before we get into talking about Devil's Hop Yard and walking through, let's do the reminders. Connecticut State Parks are open, but you do need to follow all of the social distancing guidelines. We need to keep those 20 mice distance between you and people that are not within your household. Wear a mask, anything covering your mouth if you are in groups or, or you can't maintain that social distance. Even if not, it's a good idea to cover your face as much as possible when you are out in public. Also, wash your hands thoroughly using warm water, warm soapy water. Don't touch your face. And I'm going to ask everyone, if you know someone that you haven't been in contact with for a while, reach out, touch base, find out if they're okay, find out if there's something that they might need that you might have. Let's just share with one another. We can get through this much quicker if we share. Maintain your social distance, but you can drop items off at people's homes. It'd be really great if everybody looked out for one another, especially during this time. So let's just be kind to everyone. We're all in this together. All right. Now let's go for a little walk. Now, unfortunately, I did order a stabilizer for the camera. Uh, it is due in today. So the next time I do one of these walks, it should be a little more stable. And I can't wait to use that for all of you. We are again on the Orange Trail at Devil's Hop Yard State Park. It's a beautiful park. And I want to show you this. I saw these on the way up. You can see the little red berries and the beautiful green foliage. This is partridge berry. Grows all over the place up here. And birds do like to eat the berries. So if we have a harder winter, they may be all gone. Lots of things actually can eat the berries there. And we're going to move down here a little bit further. Let's try and keep the camera stable. So we're coming into a bit of a, a hemlock grove. Devil's Hop Yard is known for the beautiful hemlocks that grow here. And this little grove, it's just a really cool example of the way hemlocks grow in the wild. Now eventually hardwoods will take over where where hemlocks are growing, like the oaks and maples and things like that. We have had issues with Connecticut's uh, hemlocks. The woody, woolly adelgid, it's a, a true bug. It's in the true bug family, which includes stink bugs, uh, bed bugs, cicadas. Those are all true bugs. And the woolly adelgid is a Asian invasive that was really doing a lot of damage to the, the hemlocks. And uh, they're, they're making a comeback. They're doing pretty well now. But take a look. A woodpecker has gone to town on this tree. So obviously there's a lot of insects in here. Uh, a lot of times when you see woodpecker damage like this, so you know there's insects in there, but when you see rows like that, okay, those rows, that's a, a uh, particular woodpecker, which I just completely blanked on the name. <laughs> uh, but they will, they will make rows. Their rows are more regular, though. I'm, I'm going to guess that this is not 
Um, Yellow-bellied sapsucker. Oh my goodness, that took me a long time. The yellow-bellied sapsucker makes really nice regular. It looks like somebody went along and drilled holes at regular interv intervals. This is a little more spread out, so something really enjoyed this, um, this tree here with all the, the damage that was done. So some insect is in there. Somebody says they love hiking at Devil's Hop Yard. Someone's asking me about my, my face mask. I don't have it on right now because I'm not around any people. I'll put it on and I think that this is just a buff. B-U-F-F, -F. it's a company that makes these. I've had them for years. I wear them in the winter because they're nice and warm. They keep your neck warm. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see. So, I'm not sure where this one came from, but they work really well as face masks as well. All right, so, you can see the beautiful hemlock grove. I want to stay, take a look at the height of that hemlock. That's a big hemlock right there. Some of these, if you just look at the trunks, you're not going to get to see all the way up at one shot, but give you an example of how high these trees are. Now, this is something that I do that, that many birders do as you're looking up a lot. Many people that are hiking, they're always looking at the ground, looking for their footing. Very important to keep track of your footing, but you should take a break and look up into the trees because they are beautiful. Look at up the hill right there. It's absolutely a gorgeous spot. You can see a lot of, there's a lot of downed trees all in this area. So it's a little bit open, but this is just an absolutely beautiful location. And I, I love the hemlocks. They have a very soft needle. Oh, here's a piece on the ground we can take a look. So uh, easy way to identify hemlocks, if you look on the underside of the needle, they say they have racing stripes. So if you see those white stripes under there, we know that this is the, a piece of a hemlock. So the storms blow, blow, the, blow them down. It doesn't mean the tree's dying if you find chunks of needles like that on the ground. This is that big one that we were looking at. It's got a little cavity in there. Looks like somebody put tissues in there. That's not good. All right. So we're gonna go down the trail here because further down are some cool things that I wanna show you. Devil's Hop Yard, there's a couple of different uh, stories that go with the name um, they, people did grow hops in this area. So hops are used for brewing. And one of the gentlemen that was bre brewing hop yard, hops up here, so where you, where you raise the hops is called a hop yard. So he was farming hops and his last name was uh, Denel, I believe it was. And they say that Devil's Hop Yard is just a... Uh, version of his name over the years it just got changed uh, and another story which we'll talk about when we get to the really cool feature of the park uh, I'm gonna save that one for a little bit later now I, I look take a look right here there's a tree that's come down it's pretty rotten looks like a white oak very very white pale bark in there Big, beautiful white oak, but it rotted out in the middle here. And this is why trees come down. If you look, most of this tree is rotted. If you look on this side, you can see that this is probably a scarring. So the tree had started to grow in here. This was probably all open and exposed. And this is where the, the rot really began within this tree. If it has, if the outer part of the tree is alive and healthy, the inner part can be rotten and it can still stand. But as the rot works its way closer and closer to the edge eventually. Now see, here's another. This was a hole here. This, this, the bark was growing around, so it was starting to scar over. The same thing here. When you see the, 
bark curling around here, this outer part was alive even after this was dead and it was growing in. So with this many open scars, I'd say this tree may have been hit by lightning and you know, shot down and blew chunks of bark off uh, down, down the trail. All right, we're gonna turn the camera around here again. So again, we are hiking at Devil's Hop Yard. I'm gonna be bringing these different parks to you. Usually they'll be on Fridays. Um, today I had to change the schedule around for tomorrow's schedule. So we're just gonna be very flexible with our schedule. The animals got changed around a little bit too over the past few days. I do have enough animals. I will continue to do these programs uh, as long as we are, the building is closed. And what I'm thinking is it's, it's becoming so popular that I will continue to do these programs even when the building's open. Obviously we won't need to do two a day because many of you will be coming to visit the nature center, I hope. I really hope, uh, <laughs> um, but we will continue to do these programs because this is just a great way uh, for me to connect with people that are not able to come to the park. So we're coming up on one of the beautiful features here at Devil's Hop Yard. And if you go to the DEEP website, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, they can give, you can get lots of information about the parks in your area and Devil's Hop Yard as well. So you can get a map, trail maps, find out how to get here. When I first arrived, it was actually hailing here, which I thought would be cool if it was going when I was broadcasting, but the hail has stopped. So there is a nice little covered bridge here going over Eight Mile River. It's a really nice little spot. Quite a bit of graffiti, but that tends to happen for some reason. And we'll take a look at the river. I could sit here for hours and watch this river. I have sat here for hours and watched this river. So isn't that just beautiful? All right, so we're gonna continue on because Devil's Hop Yard has another really spectacular feature and we're gonna head over to that next. Now there used to be mills on this river and in 1775, the Sons of Liberty, who were revolutionary militia you could call them militia, I guess. They attacked the mill that was here at the hop yard. And I don't know how much damage they did, but one of the things they did was take the millstone and break it. And the millstone was found here in 2002. They did find the millstone in the river, which was a pretty neat find. A lot of research was done to determine how it got there and uh, why it was in the river. Millstones were pretty valuable. You didn't want to lose your millstone. All right. There are plenty of beautiful picnicking areas. Again, you, we're asking people not to picnic in the parks right now. We don't want to encourage people gathering in large groups. So we have stacked all of our picnic tables. You're welcome to hike and walk and visit. Uh, the parks that allow fishing, you can fish in the parks, but please follow the rules. And if a park is closed or crowded, please find another park. We have plenty of state parks across Connecticut. 119 parks, uh, or is it 114? I always get it mixed up between parks and forests. There's like 19 forests and 114 or 119 parks. Lots of parks and forests to choose from. So I really suggest that you uh, 
visit a local park. Nobody in Connecticut's more than 15 minutes from a park. This is, I, I don't know. It's so beautiful here at, at Devil's Hop Yard. So I grew up not too far from here. This was one of the places that we liked to come and visit. But I did visit many of the parks. I'm going to also ask people to stay on the trails. Um, it's really important to maintain the banks and, uh, and things. I think I'm on just a fisherman's trail right now. But you can get a glimpse of another one of the really spectacular features that is here at Devil's Hop Yard. Now, normally I would ask everybody to pick up trash, but in today's climate, I would say you need to be wearing gloves and take some really extreme precautions if you are picking up trash. I, did I miss a question about a millstone? Looks like somebody answered a question about a millstone. The millstones were large, round stones, and you would had grooves carved in them so that the grain would pass between two of the stones and get ground into flour. All right, how cool is this? There is a waterfall at Devil's Hop Yard. If you've been to the park, then you know about this because it's really special. The millstone was actually found at the base of the falls, which is the reason it took so many years to find it. You cannot swim here. Let us be very clear about that. This is not a swimming area. Today you wouldn't want to anyway, it's freezing out here. <laughs> there's, there's not a whole lot to say about a beautiful waterfall. So I'm just gonna sit here and let you observe it for a while. So the other story about Devil's Hop Yard, down in the rock, and I only see, that's not a really good example, let me zoom in. You see that circular pit there, it looks like a little puddle. Those form when a rock gets brought down and gets caught in an eddy and it starts to spin around and it will grind the rock away. And if that rock gets moved out by the water and a larger rock gets in there and gets caught in the same circle that's already been created, it will grind the hole a little bit larger. This is one of the best places in New England to find these pots. That's what they call them, these little holes in the stone. So one of the stories about Devil's Hop Yard is that the devil was crossing the river and he got his tail wet which he doesn't want to be wet. And so he leapt to get away and his hooves burned holes in the rock. So I'll see if I can find one of the larger ones. There are some pretty big ones here, some really nice round ones as well. And it looks like I'm not seeing any right now. They're probably underwater. But that's one of the stories about how Devil's Hop Yard got its name is the devil hopped away after getting his tail wet. You can see there is a place up above. And there are people that cross the fence where they're not supposed to be, so I'm not going to show them. But that's a great view up there as well. There is a parking lot up above and a parking lot behind me where I parked. So... 
This is another one of Connecticut's jewels within the crown of the state park system. This is just absolutely a gorgeous location. I'm going to zoom out a little and let you see the full falls. Someone is wondering who came up with that story, and I am wondering that as well. It's a very interesting story. When people first saw those round holes in the rock, they had no idea how they got there. Um, and I have no idea how they got the story of how they got there, how you went from a hole in the rock to the devil getting his tail wet. But it is a fun story. Connecticut State Parks are full of fun stories like this. The land was purchased for this park in 1919. There was a, a woman from Colchester who was a big driving force behind acquiring this land because she didn't like how much of it was being logged. There was a lot of logging going on in the area. Uh, so the state purchased the land and it became a state park. It was purchased in 1919. I don't know what year it opened as a park. But back then it was the Forest and Park Commission. They're the ones that purchased the land. I'm gonna keep showing you the, the water while I look around for another one of the pots. I thought there was one on the other side. All right, do we have any other questions or comments? I hope everyone enjoyed. This is just a short visit here at Devil's Hop Yard. And I will continue to do these little videos as long as the Nature Center is closed. We'll just keep going. Do the falls typically dry up in the summer? There are years that, yes, they'll, they'll, they won't dry up completely, but you won't see the flow that we're seeing right now. So there is uh, camping here, very, very small campgrounds. I don't think there's more than 20 sites, and it is not open every year. Some years we are not able to open uh, the campgrounds, but they do still have a, a camping area. All right, again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We are going to do this tomorrow. We're going to do a bullfrog talk at 11 o'clock. I'll be doing it from the Nature Center. At 2 o'clock tomorrow, you will get to listen to John Himmelman read his book about the singing frogs. Really great. I'm very excited for this. Uh, he's a great guy, and he lives in the same town I do, so we'll... We'll get his book recorded. He already has a recorder. We'll be playing it on Facebook Live, and then we will put it in our archive, megspointnaturecenter.org, the virtual learning center. You'll get to see all of the videos that we've done. You can also find them on the Megs Point Nature Center YouTube channel. And it has actually, I'm not sure if this is hail or little snowflakes, but there's a little bit of frozen precipitation right now. All right. Thank you guys all for watching, and we will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock learning about bullfrogs.